I want to tell you something today. Your life is not impossible. The promises of God are not impossible. That what God spoken to in your life can still come to pass. That in spite of the fact that you have to reconstruct some things and tear down some things and rearrange some things and may have to do some demolition in order to do some rebuilding, that God can redesign your life in spite of your past. 99 years old is not a good time to have a child. Even if you're able to have a child, who wants to be running in behind a two-year-old at 101? This is not a good time in the eyes of men to have a child, but it was just right for God. And I'm trying to tell you that God's going to give you the right thing that at a time that seems like the wrong time in your life. I'm trying to tell you that what you started out snickering at didn't mean that you didn't want it. It didn't mean that Sarah didn't want a child. It was just that at this particular time, it was harder than ever to believe God. In the middle of COVID-19 and an economic breakdown and a world in chaos and the country divided by politics, this is the worst time to do anything. And yet God has a way of picking the worst time to do the best stuff. Oh, God, I hope you hear me. I hope you hear me right now. I hope you hear me right now. I hope you understand that in the middle of all of this chaos and all of this bad news, it's the enemy trying to distract you so that you will focus on the bad news and miss the good news. Do you not know that more people became millionaires during the Great Depression than any other time in the history of this country? While other people were talking about the bread lines and talking about how things were going down and how things were impossible, other people were buying up property, buying up businesses, buying up companies because they were on sale for little or nothing, because they recognized that the time didn't have anything to do with the promise. Every now and then, there are a few people that look beyond the headlines and see the opportunities. I want to talk to Altaya. I want to talk to you today because the enemy is trying to distract you with the bad news to the point that you don't see the good news. Let me tell you something. Everybody's not worried about the bad news. Everybody's not worried about the headline. Everybody's not upset about the things that common people are upset about. Other people are looking for the opportunity in spite of the A. I'm 99, but God said it's going to happen. And COVID is everywhere. We're spiking in the city, but God said he's going to bless me. Things are getting worse than ever, but I believe God's going to bless me. The country looks like it's falling apart, but God said, I'm not looking at none of that stuff. I swear I'm going to bless you. And the headlines have nothing to do with it. And the report has nothing to do with it. And the news has nothing to do with it. And the politics have nothing to do with it. And the disease has nothing to do with it. Is anything too hard for God? Oh, yeah, yeah. Not for America. Not for your state. Not for your neighborhood. Not for your mayor. Is anything too hard for God? And so I want to preach to you about this because I know that the conditions stand in contradiction to the promise of God. I know that the adversity is great. I know that there are a thousand legitimate reasons for you to sit back and be uncomfortable and be nervous and be afraid and be isolated and be depressed and be discouraged and be fearful and, 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 and sit in the back of your mind and say, oh God, I believe you could have done it in 2018. I believe you could have done it in 2015, and maybe you could have even done it in 2019, but Lord, this 2020 ain't no way in the world that you could shut up laughing behind the door. Come from behind the door of unbelief and believe that even now God can do something in your life until you get the kind of faith that defies the evidence you will never get a breakthrough from God. When Jesus heard that Lazarus was dead and he came down where Lazarus was and and he came to see Mary and Martha. Martha said, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Mary said, but even now, I want somebody with that even now faith, the kind of faith that says, I know he's dead. I know he's stinking. I know we buried him. I know he's in the ground. I know we rolled a stone in front of him. But because you're here, even now, even now, even 
enough. You've got the power to raise him back up again. There are at least a hundred folks listening at me right now. God's got an even now miracle for you. A even now miracle. And in spite of miracle, a miracle that's going to break forth in your life is going to be the best miracle at the worst time. It's going to be something new coming out of something old. I prophesy and declare unto you today, I'm talking to somebody right now in the middle of the worst time. You're going to be telling your grandchildren all hell was breaking loose. The country was in chaos. They were burning up neighborhoods. They were sending in the military. We didn't know if the country was going to stand. But God told me to buy it now. And because I did it right then, we are where we are right now. God is getting ready. Oh. God is getting ready to do something in your life. But he sent this word to you today. Because God is tired of you standing behind the door of doubt and fear and carnality, laughing at his word. You are believing the word of the world and laughing at the promise of God. And God said, I heard you laughing inside of yourself. I heard you saying it was too late. I heard you saying it's a bad time. I heard you saying it was impossible. But is anything, is anything, 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 if it's a thing, God can do it. God can do anything, anything, name a thing, name a thing. If you name a thing, it's anything, anything you name, God can do it. Is anything, whoo. Is anything, is anything too hard for God? So here she is, the same woman that starts out behind the door laughing at God. It's the first lady of faith to be mentioned in the hallmark of the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews through faith also. It's almost like the Holy Spirit is bragging at how far he brought her in her thinking. He took her from laughing and lying to believing. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. The one that was laughing and lying grew up. The one who was doubting and worrying grew up. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength. This is a Sunday morning for you to receive strength. You've been tired, you've been depleted, you've been weak, you've been frustrated, You've been out of energy. You've been out of gas. Let me tell you why you feel so bad. It's what you've been eating. You've been eating carnal food. You've been eating worldly thoughts. You've been eating the words of the flesh. And as long as you live off of that Egyptian diet, you're going to die in the wilderness. In order for you to make it to the promised land, you got to eat manna. You got to eat the food that God is sending. You got to eat the word that God is sending. You got to believe the word that God is sending. You got to settle in your spirit. God has spoken and he is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. And I don't care what time it is. God knows my birthday. God knows how old I am. God knows I haven't had a cycle. God knows what's up with Abraham. God knows what's going on in my life. God knows what's going on in my situation. But I declare if God says I'm going to have a baby, somebody get me a birthing stool. I'm going to need me a birthing stool because I'm going to go into labor at a strange time and bring forth the promise of God in my life. Who would have thought that Harlan Sanders on Social Security would open up a business that's a household name all over the world? 
that somebody drawing a pension, a social security of a few hundred dollars a month would open up a chicken company and end up going into business at 65. Who would have thought that somebody that old would just be getting started? That God would do a new thing out of an old thing. Who would have thought that that could happen to you? After all you've been through, that God could bring you out of prison and make you the head and not the tail. That God could do you like Joseph and bring you out of cell block B and make you the prince of Egypt. Who would have thought that God could take somebody with a broken past and a damaged reputation and raise you up and make you respected in your community? I'm talking about you coming into agreement with what God has spoken over your life. You don't agree with it. I'm preaching it. You don't agree with it. Until you agree with it and stop snickering and saying that's for them, but it's not for me. And it might be for her, but it's not for me. It might be for him, but it's not for me. Until you stop telling yourself, I'm stuck in the hood and I can't get out. Until you stop telling yourself there is no way out, there is no way up, I can't do anything, I tried this, I tried that, it failed, I got to stay here, I'm stuck here, I might as well give up and live like I am one of them rather than to be who I really wanted to be. Until you stop saying that stuff to yourself, you are still stuck behind the door of unbelief. Why has Sarah laughed behind the door? I laugh not, Lord, she lied. I don't care how long you hear great preaching. I don't care if you listen to everything I'm teaching on YouTube over and over again, and you can quote it better than me. You can quote it better than me. You could even preach it better than me. But until you believe it, it will not work in your life. I'm talking about coming into agreement. Abraham and Sarah, according to the scriptures I just read with you, were in agreement at how ridiculous God's word was for them. But as they kept on walking with God. See, most people don't stay together long enough to walk into the maturity place. It takes you years to walk into a place of full maturity. She's 99 years old. And they're still spiritually immature. It takes years before you walk into a place where you can look the evidence in the face and say, is anything too hard for God? So when you hear the writer of Hebrews in the 11th chapter talking about the power couple, you got to understand they didn't start out the power couple. They started out the line couple the laughing couple, the doubting couple, the couple of fear and unbelief. But as they kept on walking with God, you got to walk with God through the laughing stage. You got to walk with God through the lion stage. You got to walk with God through the fearing stage. You got to walk with God through the worrying stage. And as you continue to walk with God, like scales falling off you, little by little by little by little, God begins to mature himself into you to bring you into the power of agreement through faith also. Sarah herself received strength. You're going to need strength for what God's getting ready to give you. You're going to need strength for what God's getting ready. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to have any strength. That's why he's feeding you all that stuff you shouldn't be eating in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, even in your body, because he doesn't want you to have the energy to birth, to really get that. Labor is hard work. Having a baby is labor. I see why they call it labor. You sweat, you grunt, you groan, you break blood vessels. Birthing a baby is work. You're going to need strength to birth that thing that you have started in your life and you cannot do it tired. You cannot do it tired. You cannot do it depressed. You cannot do it feeling sorry for yourself. You cannot do it doubting yourself. You cannot do it walking in unbelief. You cannot do it walking in fear. Through faith, also, Sarah herself received strength. Strength? She needed strength, Lord? I thought she needed a cycle. I thought she needed a virile husband. I thought she needed 
to reverse the clock. God said the first thing Sarah needed was strength because Sarah was tired. Through faith also Sarah herself receives strength, strength to conceive, strength to conceive. We know she believed because it said through faith. She believed, she didn't start out believing, but she had at some point come to the place of believing. You come to the place of believing. You don't just automatically believe. You come to the place of believing. You grow to the place of believing. At first you're just making noise and you're just coming to church and you're just shouting, you're just clapping, but you're not really there yet. You come to the place of believing God. I know she finally got from behind the door, quit lying, she quit laughing. Look at her, she's a woman of faith. She was lying, she was laughing. Look at all the areas she had to grow in, from laughing to lying to believing. Just because she was lying doesn't mean she wasn't a woman of God. Just because she was laughing doesn't mean she was a, wasn't a woman of God. She had to keep on walking. As she kept on walking, she, start, she stopped lying. She stopped laughing and she started believing. So I know she was believing because it said through faith. Also, Sarah herself. Now, she, she had the faith. She's believing, but she needed strength to conceive. I want to talk to people who are in between believing and conceiving. You believe it, but you haven't conceived it yet. And the Bible said you've got enough faith that you're through laughing and you're through lying and you are believing but you need strength to conceive. And you need to lift your hands right where you are and ask God to just strengthen you and strengthen you and build you up and get you ready and get your energy back and stop allowing the enemy to talk you into not being able to do what God has called you to do. I'm talking right to you. I'm talking right to you. I'm talking right to your situation. I'm talking right to your circumstances. I'm talking right to how you feel in your body. I'm talking right to how you feel in your head. I'm talking right to how you feel in your moods. I'm talking right to how you feel in your situation. You need to whoo, receive shata. You need to receive strength. You need to right now, right now, coming at you is strength from the Lord. Coming at you is strength from God. 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 Coming at you is strength glory to God strength in order to get from believing to conceiving you have to receive strength to conceive seed 